in this video i will show how you can model this simply supported beam in inventor nastran so this beam has a length of l equal to 2 meters the distributed load is uh, 100 newton per meter the boundary conditions are simply supported that means at that end it is hinged it can only rotate around this point and at this end the beam is on a roller boundary condition that means at this end the beam can move in this two direction or in the x direction uh, but it cannot move into any other direction but it can rotate around this particular point the material of this beam is alloy steel and the cross section of this beam is uh, the width b is 100 millimeter that means it's very wide this beam and the thickness is only five millimeter. Let's open Inventor and model this beam. So the modeling is very simple. The beam is just a straight line, but even before we'll go to tools, document settings, and in unit, we'll make sure unit of the length is meter. Apply, close. Now to sketch the beam, we'll go to sketch. I'll click line, select any of the plane and as line is already selected, select the origin, keep it horizontal. We have a blue box. That means we can type in numbers. I will type two as my units are in meters. If I now press enter, I will have a horizontal line of two meter in dimension. So here is the line. And by that, the drawing of the beam is completed. So I will click finish sketch, go to the front view. Now to analyze this beam in Nastran, I will go to environment and click Autodesk Inventor Nastran. The modeling of this beam will be performed under this model. So expand this. I will go from top to bottom, all the steps necessary to model this beam. So let's start with material. There's a generic material, right click and delete that. Now right click on material and new. As we know, the material is alloy steel. Click OK. So all the necessary material properties are now filled in this box. Density, Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, plastic parameter, the strength and yield stress, etc. But for this beam, only the elastic material properties, this Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio is sufficient. The others won't be used. So you can either remove them or just keep them as they are. So select OK. So we have selected material. Now you may ask, we know the cross section of the beam. The width is 100 millimeter and the height is five meter, but we have drawn only a straight line. We did that because this straight line represents the centroid of the beam. So you know the centroid of any beam of uniform cross section is a straight line. So the cross section is now yet to be defined. The cross section is defined in idealizations. So expand by clicking plus and then you have this beam. So right click and new. As you go here, you can select this cross section. And when you see that line element type, make sure that your element type is beam so now on cross section if i click here i will see that i can define the shape of the cross section i will select a bar because i had a rectangular cross section and i have the beam height in the y direction which was five millimeter that means 0 0.005 meters and the width of the beam was along z direction and the width was 100 millimeter which is dimension 2 so 100 millimeter is 0 0.1 meter click ok so our cross section and element type is now defined next thing in the tree which is relevant is the constraints so let's create a constraint and we know that at this point the constraint is hinged and it's hinged along the z axis so we will untick that rotation around z axis or rz and by that this point can rotate around the z axis note that this is x this is y and out of the plane is z axis so it can rotate around this point but it cannot translate along x y z or rotate along x or y axis so this is satisfied and now we have to create another constraint for the other point right click and new so select that point 
and this point is selected now this point as i know can also rotate so untick this rz that means it can rotate around this point as there is a roller underneath this point can also move along the x-axis because of rolling of that roller and uh, to allow that we have to untick this tx or translation along the x-axis and if we untick that means this point is now allowed to move along the x-axis and by that our definition of boundary condition for the beam is completed let's remind ourselves that the distributed load q is 100 newton per meter so let's apply that load next so after constraint we have load right click new and uh, we will apply vertically downwards load and the type of the load is not force instead that is distributed load so click distributed load and the distributed load is applied in this line so select the line and the magnitude was 100 but it was downwards in y direction so i put 100 in fy and put a minus sign and by that we have a distributed load on the beam now it is the time that we can mesh this beam and run the simulation to mesh we can simply click generate mesh there are other tricks to adjust the size of the mesh but let's not do that simply generate so mesh has been generated and run the simulation and it will ask you to save so save with your preferred name and the simulation has started to run the nostrum simulation is now complete and you can see the deflection in this beam now it shows the stress in this uh, contour you can move to displacement and it will show the displacement and this is the maximum displacement you can choose to see them in millimeter we can see that the maximum displacement is 97.4 millimeter at the middle point it is sometimes important to see the shear force and bending moment diagram in a beam to see that we have to make sure in analysis we edit and select force so if this is selected then if you run the simulation again it takes only few seconds then it would be possible for you to go to this drop down select beam diagram and it is showing now the shear force you can if you want choose to show the moment diagram and this is the moment diagram you can also probe and see in different places what are the moment there